So pre-diabetes, what is it? It's the high-risk state for developing diabetes. So, and it's defined by test values that are higher than normal, but lower than the diabetes diagnosis. So let me take you through this slide. So there are several ways of diagnosing diabetes. You can measure a, measure a fasting plasma glucose in the morning. You can do an oral glucose tolerance test where you consume 75 grams of glucose and then check your glucose two hours later. Or you can measure your HbA1c. And I'll come back to HbA1c in a moment. Uh, but just, just look at the yellow row. That's normal. So if your fasting glucose is less than 100 or you have an OGTT, you don't have to do an OGTT, but if you do, if it's less than 140 or if your A1C is less than 5.7, you're normal. Now, if you are being tested for diabetes, if your number's 126 fasting or higher, then you have diabetes. Or if your two-hour glucose value is greater than 200, or if your A1C is greater, 6.5 or greater. So that's how you diagnose. So in between is the gray zone. That's your pre-diabetes. So anyone in the gray zone, so if you have a fasting glucose between 100 and 125, you will have impaired fasting glucose, IFG. If you're 140 to 199 on an OGTT, you have impaired glucose tolerance, and if your A1C is 5.7 to 6.5, you're at high risk for diabetes. So anybody in these gray zone, whichever of these tests is used, is referred to having pre-diabetes. You want to be careful. These are artificial cut points made by a bunch of doctors. And uh, you, know, you should be a little cynical about doctors, <laughs> I should tell you. Uh, I always tell my patients, doctors are bad for your health, and I hope that is true. Well, let me give you some facts about prediabetes. If you use the American Diabetes Association defined test cutoffs, you know, answering your question about changes, but these are the current diets, then about a third of the U.S. population has prediabetes, and about half of the adults 65 or older have prediabetes. So, as I mentioned, you're in that gray zone. You don't have diabetes, but you're not normal, so you're in that gray set. Now, you can switch to both sides. You can go from gray zone to normal, and from the gray zone to the diabetic zone. So about 2% of people with prediabetes progress to diabetes every year. So they go from the gray zone to the diabetes zone, about 2% per year. It will vary a little bit because it depends on the genetic risks in that particular population. So certain populations, that, that transition might be higher. In other populations, it might be lower. And people can become normal, as I mentioned. So you can go from gray zone to normality. And prediabetes can convert back to normal. In one study in the UK, 86% became normal in 10 years. So it's not always true that everybody will progress. I think you have to keep an optimistic mind on these things.